know, change your mindset. And um, now in Paris, in Barcelona, in I believe Saudi Arabia, if I'm getting that right, there's other imitations like this, you know, to have these temporary spaces, these pop-ups. You've probably heard of this term. For example, in the UK also, there's uh, one in Brazil. Anyhow, so it's, it's traveling. It's an idea that's traveling. Um, the thing is, a lot of these things are just temporary, and they're, just, they're not just play, but they are play. So I want to contrast this with another story of a place called The Place for Sustainable Living. This is also in the Bay Area, but this place is now five years old. When I came by just the other week, and I was hanging out with one of the main organizers, we sat on a bench right in the middle here, while this woman had just finished hacking together a bicycle that she could do pedal-powered pasta cutting, you know, for those little cutters. And he was sharing with me that they had also just started prototyping a new sort of mix for rooftop garden soil that's very lightweight and still very packed with nutrients. So at the place, you have a real experiential learning setup where they have workshops for hacking and building bikes to experiment with all sorts of things, and they're constantly shifting things around and holding these different spaces for productive uses. They, at this fifth year anniversary, they had people in the neighborhood who they'd gone door to door, handing out invitations by hand, uh, coming around and saying, hey, this is what I do for a livelihood. This is me, and I'm happy to share my skills. Uh, they had sort of a clever twist on face painting where the kids were painting the adults' faces, and they had the pleasure of welcoming back this group called Splendor All Around. This is a place that has more or less launched a thousand buses. They had the Sustainability Roadshow, which is a coach bus going around the country, and then now they have this, this band actually lives and plays out of this bus. So they had their show this, uh, during this little festival. And what's interesting about the place, you know, is that it's all volunteer, and they've actually managed to sort of swing around the other side. They are volunteering all the time. They are stewarding their bike workshops, their gardens, and it's also cooperative, so there's a real structure in place, you know, and this place isn't going really anywhere, I don't think. But what's more important in comparing it with free space is both of these places and spaces are all volunteer. People are volunteering their labor, they're doing it because it feels good, and What's interesting about this is how their volunteering approaches what looks like stewardship, temporarily or for the long haul. So what we think about when we think about stewardship is sometimes the commons. Uh, or Walgreens a few years back, and he was, you know, he's not so much into technology or he's not going to go and get a tasker to pick him up something, but he knows what he needs and how he wants to live his lifestyle. But increasingly, technology and companies around him are sort of subjecting him to this. So there are a lot of tools, you know, a lot of technologies that are very inspiring. And I think they all come second to the wisdom of co-ops and to the commons and of stewardship. These are all really fascinating projects that I've been looking at amongst others. There's one that's, I mean, most of them are blockchain or Bitcoin enabled in some way. There's one specifically for New Zealanders. So all of you all from New Zealand. Resources and to build some infrastructure. It's practicing and figuring out what, what's possible in, in the real learning experience. And that might culminate in some kind of stewardship. What's extremely important to point out about the two stories of free space and the place for sustainable living is while stewardship was really fundamental at the place, with free space, there was nothing much to steward. It was all temporary, and it was a lovely cultural experiment. It was a, an idea, and the idea has traveled. And the place... They're not going anywhere, and they barely even advertise their fifth anniversary outside of the neighborhood. So with this particular tension between these sort of one-off moments of delight and these sort of long-haul patient projects, 
the question of what is effective stewardship and how does volunteering turn into that is very much on my mind with the research I'm doing with folks from the Peer to Peer Foundation. Effective stewardship, as I've seen it so far in these projects and a few others, and I'm curious to hear if you guys have any with these sort of open collectives. First and foremost, it starts with some initiative. The idea of having all these tools to interconnect people, to kind of link up what we own or what we have, a drill or a, you know, a free couple of hours, feels a lot less actually motivated and a lot less fluid than having some thing, hey, let's do this together, let's have some solidarity, you know, and some shared purpose. What can we achieve together? Not, well, you've got a drill and I've got a couple of free hours, so let's, you know, make that happen. Let's, let's start a free space. Or let's, let's hack a bike together and, and create pasta out of just pedaling, which is, I guess, functional. There's also working groups. Having committees, having uh, small circles of people that are dedicated to a dimension of that initiative is really plain and really transformative. With free space, it was just total laissez-faire, whatever. You see a blank wall, okay, well, whoever gets there first gets to do the mural. They actually thought about painting the walls again, but again, two months, they just painted them white and then they left because that's what they were required to do. Working groups can be a space where people can enter into, learn real quick what's happening, get information, get some solidarity amongst the people in that thing, in that particular role, and get moving. And then finally, and I think most importantly, is that it's welcoming, that there's this embrace of who the person is and what potential they see, not first, what needs are there, what tasks are there to be completed? Oh, here, come on in and we, we, you, know, you can take off a chunk of this uh, stack to work through. Seeing things in terms of potential and welcoming people in with what they're seeing, that's what keeps things fresh. I know that WeShare has also been working really hard to try to re-enliven itself in that way. So having that, what feels maybe as a little bit soft, is actually really functionally important, this idea of welcoming. You can also go to creatingcommons.org, which is a sort of portal to get us moving with this project of building some kind of way to support people in welcoming and including new volunteers into open collectives and to also opening collectives. So thank you.